Well, another beautiful night in Lambton Shores on beautiful Lake Huron. I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about our next video, and that's understanding the difference between reaction saves and blocking saves. Years ago in the 90s, I wrote an article for Goalies World Magazine where I wanted to be the first guy to talk about this topic. Because back then, we were very reactionary. Every time somebody shot a puck, we're reacting, we're kicking, big fancy saves. And blocking saves were just starting to come into the NHL. And I wanted to distill down this to one very simple concept. Goalies, in your life, you're only going to make one of two saves. It's either going to be a reactionary save or a blocking save. Now, by definition, what is a reaction save? is when a puck is coming, you can assess the trajectory, you know where it's going, you have time to react to the height and the direction. A blocking save is where the puck is released so close to you and at such a velocity that you have no chance to react. Now a good example of that would be Alexander Ovechkin, stationed over on the dot, letting his 95 mile an hour one-timers go from 25 feet away. The human being simply cannot react to the flight of the puck. That's not an opinion, that's just basically physiology. You can't react, that puck travels that distance in too short of a time that you can't react to it. Now, back to the reactionary saves. An example of a reactionary save would be a guy snapping the puck from the wing from 35, 40 feet away. You can see the stick puck relationship, you see the height, you see the angle, and you can move a piece of your body in front of that to make that save. So, goalies, there's only two saves you're ever going to make, a reaction save and a blocking save. Today's video, I want to do a demonstration with Trav so you can see my proof of concept. What I did was I had Matt come in and I told him beforehand, I said, I want you to simulate a real shot on Trav, but you're not going to use a puck. I want you to come in and make a very realistic shot to his blocker side high. Second shot, I want you to come in, make a realistic shot to his five hole. So simulating a breakaway where a guy's shooting 10 feet away, Matt came in and executed those two things. And Trav was able to figure out generally where that puck was directed. And I think there's a save illusion that happens on a lot of these plays in the game. So when guys are in tight in the NHL shooting 80, 90 mile an hour pucks and goalies are making these saves, they appear reactionary, but they're not reacting to the flight of the puck. And they've got a keen sense of where it's going. They're intelligently anticipating. Now what does all this mean? Do I want you guessing and just blocking everything? Of course not. Every goalie is going to be different. Every goalie is going to have different reaction times. You might be able to react to pucks only from 30 feet and out. Some goalie might be able to react to puck from 20 feet and in. It all depends on who you are and what your reflexes are. But you need to understand that for your own game. Where is your reflex zone where you can actually react and track pucks? When it's closer than that, you're going to have to use your box control. You're going to have to fill up space and make that puck hit you by building little walls on that angle. And this is why I think it's important for you to understand one other factor. In the NHL, on 10 shots on net, 8 out of 10 don't allow you reactionary time. Physiologically impossible. 2 out of 10, they can react to. So what does this mean? This means that we've got to be very good at reading the play, intelligently anticipating and connecting the dots, so that we can get our body in the right spot and give ourselves a chance to stop these pucks that we might not have time to react to. Now I love goalies that react on more pucks, the most pucks they possibly can. I detest goalies that just block everything and hope it hits them. We've got to be very patient in our butterfly. And we've got to rely upon our reflexes as often as possible. But we need to understand the 80-20 rule. Most shots you're going to see when you play high-level hockey don't give you reactionary time. And it's important for you to understand that. So let's watch how Trav does on this imaginary puck drill. The puck's over here to the dot. I'm going to do a little experiment with you that you've never done before, I don't think. In your whole life, Matt's going to come in with a breakaway with no puck on his stick and when he gets right into here he's going to shoot a fake puck but super realistic he's going to try to beat you with a fake puck shot i want you to react to where you think he's shooting it okay and then he's going to tell us where he was shooting. I'll, I'll tell you later okay. just i just want to prove a point so get in the net like you're playing a breakaway hey make it look stupid real like don't make it exaggerated make it look realistic but here we go all right Was he right? Did you go blocker side high? Yeah, I did. So yeah, right. Okay, come here. Oh, yeah, he right. This time, just try to go five hole. Every time, you're perfect on it. 
And the reason I'm, I bring that whole point up is because this is the mythology about reaction on shots. Okay. You're not reacting to the puck in any way, but you're reacting appropriately to the scoring chance and the stick and body language information he's giving. You clearly recognize he was going blocker cheddar there. Yeah. No the puck. Five hole. And the five hole was a second. Like he was going five That's hole. right. The, I told him to go blocker high and five hole, which you you've got nailed right on. Which comes back to my whole point earlier about how a lot of people believe the goalie's reacting to pucks off sticks. If he shoots it from right there at 80 miles an hour, you're not reacting to the puck off the stick, and I'll show you here in a second, okay? The screen board, I believe, was invented by Mitch Korn probably 40 years ago, and it's one of his most famous props. I've used it for years as a goalie, and I've used it as a coach for years. And the reason why the screen board is awesome, it hides the stick-puck relationship and doesn't allow the goalie to react to the stick-puck relationship doesn't allow you to react to the sound because a shooter sweeps them under without sound, without warning. There's a million drills we do off the screen board and you're gonna see some in today's video, but what it does is it really forces the goalie to refine their knee drive, develop an explosive knee drive, also kicking to the corners, sealing low. A lot of times today, goalies don't get clean looks at the puck and they have to react late. So today we're gonna to work on the prop called the screen board, invented by the legendary Mitch Korn. So first sequence here, I'm gonna slide pucks underneath this. And the first variation we use, you're just gonna be mid-crease, and as it comes under there, just try to drive your butterfly and react to this puck, okay? I'll do it, ready? Mid-crease, mid and I'm just back up one step, give yourself a little bit of reaction time. Now they're gonna come under here, and just react with stick save, butter, butterfly save, whatever you want, it's low shot, you ready? I can't see, so I'm just gonna go down and play. Uh, right, you're not, you're not, you're gonna, well, you'll, you'll, I'm going to shoot it soft enough where you'll pick it up and you'll know left, right. So you want me starting, standing Just, up? Yeah, start yeah. Down? starting up. Ready? Just react to it. My bad. Two more. Last one. So that's basically a warm-up version of it. So what you're doing is we're working on just picking up pucks and just using a purely foot-eye coordination. I don't, I don't like this. I feel very uncomfortable. Which I should. That's the whole point. You know what it identifies? It identifies foot issues, reactionary issues with your feet. This time you're gonna go without your stick. We're gonna see how well you seal without your stick. And throw your stick on top of the net, same drill. Ready? Here we go. Excellent, excellent. So that right there is about 30 to 40 miles an hour tops, if that. I feel so uncomfortable doing that. And the reason is, because you're actually not, re the way you've made butterfly saves in your life is you're reading the situation and you're seeing the stroke coming yeah. and you know to trigger your knee drive. But if you don't see the release, now it becomes purely reactionary. That proves my point about people reacting to the flight of the puck. Because if you're purely just reacting to that puck, there's no sound to it, there's no release, there's no stick-puck relationship. Now you're making a re reaction based on you seeing the puck. Yeah, I can't hear it, I can't see it, I can't anything. Right, you just have to react. And goalie's reactionary, right? Yeah. Oh. So now we're gonna do a variation. And again, these are the same things that Mitch does in the NHL with his guys. We're gonna simulate a breakaway retreat. So you're gonna step out to challenge, tap under here, and then back up. And as you're backing, I'm gonna slide one. So I'm catching you on your retreat, okay? Ready, here we go. With your stick on this one. Here we go. Two more. Nice save. Last one. Beautiful, beautiful. Excellent. And so, the reason why Mitch started using these and one thing he's done to turn his goal, like Hasek, 
would have this closer, closer, closer to minimize reaction time and still able to react to the actual flight of the puck. See, a lot of goalies think they have quick feet and they're not have anything to do with reaction to the puck, the reaction to the situation. So one thing we're going to change here now is I'm going to put Matt on that back door over there. I can still slide one under it where you have to butterfly or it's going to come over to him there and then you got to rotate and get over to his stick. So well, am, I, am I standing or the restriction? You're starting right here, stationary, like you got traffic in front of the net. Okay, there we go. This is, this is exactly what it's like to play in the NHL, right here. There you got it. Great save, Trav. Two more, two more. Last one. One more, one more, one more. Here we go, here we go. That one's got to be in the video. Hey, safe. But if you, we're going to go the opposite way now. And just think about it in these terms. This is what happens. You got front net traffic, you can't see crap, and all of a sudden Ovechkin gets one on his stick, and you're right here, and you see it developing. Honestly, I'm starting to think more about like my weight transfer. Like, am I getting too committed to that shot or? Right, so you gotta be you gotta be loose. You can't be you can't be committed to anything. You gotta have balance so you're floating so you can move sideways, rotate, do what you need to do. Same thing. Nice. Let's do two more, two more with a base speed like that. Two more. Okay, last one like that. Okay, now he's gonna come in, try as hard as he can. So he's gonna go full balls now. Nice, nice. That's your next save. Don't hit him in the head, Matt. There we go. Nice save. Okay, three more. Excellent, I love your pivots. You're getting square and nice. Two more. Excellent, excellent. Last one, Trav. Outstanding. 